Welcome to the third lecture on prevening calf management. As you may recall, we started with calving management and then we did neonatal calf management and we moved on to prevening calf management where we mainly talked about feeding. Um, so I'll do, be doing my last lecture on prevening calf management next week, which will be on housing, right? Uh, so that will be prevening calf management number four. Right, then we move on to weaning, heifer calf management, which is post-weaning calf management and adult animal management, lactating, dry cow, transition cow, so on. Right. Um, so we have so far talked about um, colostrum feeding in detail, uh, the quantities, when, how much to give, frequency, which route, the physiological importance, the nutritive values, the immune uh, function, different types of placentation, etc., etc. Right? Then we also talked about certain aspects of uh, concentrate feeding, which is calf starter, right? Uh, the physiology behind that, you know, why we should uh, feed concentrates, different volatile fatty acids, what part of rumen development it helps and so on right uh, and then we also talked about you know a very important part of all of preweaning management is ensuring pre-ruminant to ruminant transition so we spent uh, quite a lot of time talking about that as well right so we uh, with regard to this transition from pre-ruminant to ruminant we talked about you know four aspects right uh, rumen papillary development um, then, you know, establishment of microbes, development of muscular tissue, papillary integrity, right? Um, so I went into details about this papillary development uh, when it starts and so on, the volatile fatty acids that affect that, right? And then today we'll talk about establishment of microbes a little bit in detail. I won't spend a lot of time on muscular tissue or development or volume expansion because it's simply a function of you know uh, substrate right with time it takes place gradually uh, but of course it won't take place if you don't provide enough substrate right which is essentially roughage right so this is not something that will uh, you know complete prior to weaning right so this is mainly something that happens afterwards because that's when you introduce a lot of uh, substrate quantity as well as far as papillary inter integrity goes this is like uh, you know if you don't provide diet uh, you know abrasiveness papilla tend to clump together right and this keratin produced won't get sloughed off right so for the keratin to get naturally sloughed off removed right there has to be abrasiveness or rough diet right um so we will we'll um, talk about establishment of microbes where do they get microbes from right so if they are uh, born under hygienic conditions and separated from the mother and all that just like we mentioned you know they shouldn't have any microbes by the time at the time of birth right um so they will gradually establish this right so this is not something that can happen all of a sudden right it'll, it'll it's a time taking process that takes place slowly right but what's important here is you know animal to animal contact is important right uh, now bacteria will get you know into the system you know from you know the the foragers from you know uh, housing uh, all that uh, utensils and all that right but protozoa for protozoa right you generally need animal to animal contact right so initially animal to animal contact is very limited um, you have not done housing yet but in, initially we keep them in individual pens right um, so microbes can get int introduced basically through animal to animal contact from the environment now, like i said feed sources housing bedding utensils etc and then uh, you know we have to 
make sure that there is a favorable environment for microbial uh, room, microfloral establishment right so what, what we mean by favorable environment is you know the optimum ph and temperature of course you know they are obviously going to be there so what you and i can do is we have to ensure that there is you know a fluid environment right i mean uh, so where are these microbes going to stay suspended in free air or are they going to attach to the uh, room and mucosal wall papilla or are they going to float in fluid or are they going to attach to substrate uh, what is what are substrate substrate would be basically roughage and you know concentrate roughage or concentrates right so you have to have a su uh, surface or a substrate for these microbes to attach to right so this is where we can uh, expedite this process by providing proper substrates and also by maintain uh, facilitating you know sufficient fluid environment by giving sufficient amounts of water and then of course you know if we control the diet properly you know you you'll get the optimal ph and human temperature right okay um, so so far we have talked about colostrum feeding we have briefly talked about milk uh, feeding also there's not a lot you know I'll, I'll be talking about that today and then concentrates also we talked about you know uh, how to introduce what do we expect how we we expect it to gradually increase and amount of uh, concentrate the animal should be eating by the time of weaning and so on we talked about uh, so today we'll be talking about basically milk water and roughages right um, so one of the misconceptions by certain farmers of Sri countries like sri lanka is that they think okay the calf is on, supposed to drink only milk not water right and some people think uh, okay you know it, it drinks plenty of milk why it doesn't need any water uh, of course if if they keep the calf with the mother then of course the calf will have access to the mother's water right but sometimes uh, i've seen even in large farms you know there is no fresh water so free choice or ad libitum water is there is water available all the time it's not like you give two liters in the morning and two liters in the evening there is fresh water right so the important phrase there is fresh it can't be three days old water uh, say uh, a farmer loads there's a big barrel uh, he he loads that barrel once a week uh, right but again there is still water available for the calf anytime but that's not good enough because that's not fresh water right so uh, animals dogs cats ca cattle you know they are reluctant to drink uh you know stale or old you know non-fresh water or feed right? so having water available is not good enough you have to have fresh water continuously available right so that's what we mean by free choice or ad libitum water availability and so these are a small study right done in 1984 um see if you can interpret that you know pause the video for a minute and see if you can interpret that okay we'll come back i hope you have you did pause the video if you haven't done please do pause and think but try to interpret what this experiment means before i spell it out and so basically these are two experiment uh, experiment done using two groups of calves and so this black group they gave ad libitum water unlimited the gray group they gave no water right no water at all which means the calves only source of fluid was milk right um, so when they looked at the average daily gain body weight gain average daily gain uh, you know was high in the group that received free choice water compared to the group that did not get water and then uh, calf starter consumption which is extremely important for uh, the animal's development as well as the rumen development was also higher in this group where there was ad libitum water given compared to this group where they received no water 
and you should know this word by now scour days is you know the number of days that calves had diarrhea or loose stools again that was lower in the group that received more water compared to the group that received less water so this is also a misconception certain farmers have they say uh, sir when we give more water the calf develops diarrhea now you can obviously see that is not the case here right okay um so so basically you know what this this uh, experiment you know from 2001 shows is that uh, the effect of water consumption of calf start intake right so the the more water the calf drinks the more calf starter the calf consumes right so even up to uh, 3 kilos here right so why is that because you know um calf start is dry feed right so if the animal thinks uh, feels the physiology feels okay i i don't have enough water in the system you know the calf won't eat calf starter right so that's why the more water you give the more calf starter the calf will eat and as a result the higher the body weight gain uh, on a daily basis as well as you know if you take the whole preweaning period as a whole as you remember when you give more water they will eat more concentrates uh, they will develop the rumen papilla uh, faster and of course which will have plenty of benefits to the calf overall right um, so as a veterinarian or a future veterinarian you have to have an idea about the volume of water a calf consumes right if a farmer asks you you know the easy way out would be to say you have to have you know fresh water throughout the day make sure there's fresh water throughout the day right um, but you see that might not be a problem uh, so let's let's say the calf drinks 5 liters is expected to drink 5 liters right? but because you don't tell 5 liters you know you say you say as much water as possible the farmer let's say fills up a half a barrel right? which let's say 50 liters right so for certain farmers 50 liters versus 5 liters may not make a difference but in a certain area you know the farmer might have to uh, carry the water you know 500 meters or 100 meters from the well or whatever so uh, it's not fair right so you have to have an idea about the kind of volume a calf needs right um, so basically i also don't remember the exact figure 7.5 5.6 etc you know so what i remember is like you know uh, a one month old calf will drink about five liters right and that increases to about 10 liters by three months right so as long as you have so if any farm asks you so how much water should i so or madam how much water should i uh, leave for my calf you know you can easily say 10 liters uh, 10 liters is you know this animal doesn't drink 10 liters so if you can leave 10 liters but don't put it don't load the whole 10 liters in the morning you know just break it down to three or uh, two to three times a day give three liters in the morning another three during midday and another three in the evening you know so that that should keep it fresh right so you have to have an idea about these uh, figures right um, so that if somebody asks you can give them proper advice and when they start milking this formula changes right so then we have to uh, calculate water based on maintenance as well as milk production right? so we generally say for every liter of milk a cow needs to drink you know four to five liters of water right for every liter of milk a cow producer so we need to add that on top of the maintenance requirement but we'll go into details when we talk about the uh, about feeding of the lactating animal right so that's it for water right then what about rough ages now if you recall our previous lecture uh, one of the previous lectures we said you should not feed calves hay right we looked at this experiment from Pennsylvania State University where they gave um, you know milk only milk and hay and milk and grain or concentrate and you know hay did not do any good 
to the rumen development and another experiment that compared 0% hair versus 2% versus 4% hair right and then 0% had the best uh, growth parameters starter intake body weight gain feed conversion ratio etc etc so uh, as such we said you know this further confirmed the notion of that we should not feed hair to calves so does it mean that we don't feed any rough edges at all to calves actually but we do we do give rough edges starting as early as day four but that is not hay right so you need to know when do we introduce rough edges to a calf what type of rough edges are given and what is the the justification behind that why do we give why do why do calves need rough edges when these experiments clearly show that at least you know hay is not good right so we will talk about that in detail a little so these are some photographs i took uh, from australia right? i made this photograph in australia and see these are calves eating uh, can you guess what right so there are two things actually here one is the pelleted concentrate calf starter the other you can see is actually this is not hay or uh, fresh grass or immature grass yeah, this is straw right of course in sri lanka straw would be uh, rice straw right but in other countries it may not be rice straw it may be wheat straw barley straw etc right so you can see the straw has been chopped right so you don't always get a consistent length when you chop for the grasses right or straw right um, so you still have about one inch particles right and then you have smaller particles right so you probably don't want them more than one and a half to two inches right so generally you want the bulk of it to be about half an inch to one inch right uh, especially for this group of calves you don't want them too large you don't want them too small either so you have you see um, so one idea is that you mix them together right so why why not provide them two different um, you know troughs one trough or one bucket filled with calf starter other bucket filled with rough edges right so they haven't done that here what they have done instead is they have mixed them together so what, what what's the uh, idea behind mixing them together what do you think right so uh, so you you will learn of a, a feeding technique called tmr total mixed ration in the future if you have not already heard of it right so um, so that they are also total mixed ration right so we mix feed together uh, so you could give them separately also right you could give the concentrate the forages mineral mixture the vitamins you can give them separately but instead we choose to mix them together why do we do that so there are different um, reasons which you learn as we go along right but for now remember one of the main ideas here is that when you mix them together calves cannot separate them and eat right um now say uh, calves may have a preference for either calf starter or straw here one of them right is preferred over the other so if you give two separate buckets they will eat the one that they like better the one that tastes better right so they will eat one and not the other right but that's not what we want we want them to eat both in the proper ratio recommended by a nutritionist or whatever right um, so that's why we mix them so when you mix them calf automatically has no option but to eat both of them because they cannot uh, their prehensile pattern is such that they cannot separate the two ingredients from each other okay so that that is very important uh, to understand the logic behind mixing them together right so you have to mix them together so i did mention that this is straw right but exact ratios we will talk about here 
okay right. so basically now we have talked about uh, uh, you know the different ingredients that are fed to a calf right during the preweaning period we start with colostrum then it's milk or transitional milk then we introduce um, you know of course even on day one we introduce water and then we go on to introduce calf starter and rough edges at one point right so those are the five things that calves consume colostrum milk water then the solids which are rough edges and concentrates so 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 this particular timeline assumes that calves are weaned at day 56 which is like eight weeks seven times eight 56 right but that is not a rule set in stone right so we you, we'll talk about that um, in the future lectures but for now just remember it's uh, day 56 huh? for, for the purpose of this we are going to assume calves are going to be weaned on day 56 but that is not a constant right it can change okay right so this particular regime uh, so if you didn't uh, understand or if you didn't bother paying attention to any of my previous lecture notes on calf feeding this is the slide that you have to pay attention to right so you can still be a successful calf manager if you knew what's a calf manager in terms of feeding if you knew everything if you practiced everything on this slide alone right so this we call an intensified calf feeding program right so this is not just any calf feeding with the this is an intensified calf feeding program geared for commercial calf uh, management production for early weaning uh, to expedite rumen development to expedite calf development and so on right okay so of course we start on day one right so we mentioned that on day one we have to give 20 percent of the body weight which is the birth weight right on that particular day right uh, so we give the first 10 percent as soon as possible preferably within half an hour right of birth and then we follow it up with another 10 percent uh, of body weight in about 12 hours right so if the calf was 40 kilograms at birth we give 10 percent which is four liters within half an hour then we follow with another four liters one hour later right and of course the calf may not drink any water today because you know you are going to uh, keep the water in a bucket to start with right and we already talked about uh, that calves cannot drink from a bucket at this stage right so if the animal has consumed 20 percent of the body weight right eight liters you don't want to give it any more fluid but anyway you leave a bucket in front of the calf so that the calf gets used to the water the bucket uh, two buckets being in front of the calf all that right but you don't expect for the calf to drink water this day because it has already uh, drunken eight liters of fluid in terms in, in terms of milk right however you do want to give a bucket of water on day one on day two and three right in the natural scenario we call this transition milk right so if you go back to if you can recall that slide i did on uh, you know the composition of milk from first milking which is colostrum second milking third milking so on remember second and third milking have not turned into mature milk yet right so their composition is something in between that of colostrum and that of milk right so that's why we call it transition milk so for example uh, in milk we usually say total solids is like 13 percent but in colostrum it was 24 percent right in, in transition milk from day two you can expect total solids to be uh, neither 24 percent or 4 to 13 percent but in between 17 percent 15 percent so it will gradually come down to 13 percent right so not just total solids the proteins lactose uh, igg right all of these are in transition phase returning to uh, the levels in milk right so that is what you should 
be giving on day two or day three uh, the actual milk from the mother or stored transition milk but in large farms you know they commercial farms they may give milk replacer right also of course the milk replacer it may not have the the uh, the transitional properties certain properties of the transition milk like high immunoglobulins and all that right um so we say we call this cmr right or milk replacer um uh, and look at the dose now so on day one we gave 20 percent of body weight or birth weight right but on day two onwards we have that and now we give five percent of the body weight twice a day right so remember now this is not body weight right so on day one two three body weight and birth weight are probably not very different the same right but from day four onwards right we don't we do not increase milk consumption of the calf by body weight but instead we do this calculation by birth weight so if the calf was 40 kilograms at birth and the calf is 70 kilograms here we still calculate by birth weight uh, not body weight right so here 20 percent of the birth weight on day one day two onwards 10 percent of the birth weight right which is five percent twice a day so if, if it was a 40 kilogram calf here we gave eight liters which is two doses of four liters each but from day two onwards that will be a total of four liters for a 40 kilogram calf given in two doses of two liters each right so five percent twice a day and again you leave a bucket of water right uh, hopefully the calf drinks right but it may not drink uh, but even if it doesn't drink you can try to make it drink the water you know teach it to drink from the bucket no harm right but don't stress the calf too much at this stage uh, because it's an extremely young animal uh, imagine our own children human babies uh, we will care for them like a flower during these few days first few days right so the calf may get up walk right unlike a human baby but even though the calf gets up and walks just remember that this is still a very young immature delicate baby infant and you need to take maximum care of it minimize stresses and all that good stuff right okay so on day one cholesterol and milk on day two to three transition milk and water right and then from day four onwards you do a couple of additions right so on day uh, four you add straw and calf starter right so milk same thing as day two and three ten percent of birth weight see notice birth weight huh? not body weight right which is five percent twice a day and uh, so starting from day four you do that throughout and you know maybe during the last week or so you depending on the farm system you can decide to gradually reduce this volume uh, so maybe uh, so if you give five percent bid you make it three percent bid for three days right and then you make it two percent bid let's say you're giving so right now 40 kilogram calf you're giving two liters right uh, bid right so either you can make it one liter bid or you can make it uh, so first you make it one two liters once a day right or you can make it one liter twice a day and then do one liter once a day right so it, it you you can play around with that right so the only reason you do that gradually is because to minimize the stress at weaning right otherwise the calf is expecting two liters of milk uh, morning and evening right and suddenly you know for 55 days i have received all this and suddenly 56 days i am receiving nothing right um, so that can be a stress to the animal so that's why we advise to gradually reduce during the last week or so so that 
um, calf is already adapted to that uh, um, from twice a day to once a day lower quantity and then calf to compensate for that calf also starts to increase calf starter consumption right so that's why we give this transition or buffer period is recommended right so calf starter like i showed in the uh, chart last week right uh, last lecture um, you know we the calf will in, eat only a small quantity at the beginning uh, maybe 30 grams but it gradually increases and by the time of weaning the calf should be eating one kilogram right so we say one kilogram uh, but here i've said you know even up to 750 grams right that is because some of our calves are not the 40 kilogram calves right so textbook says ideally one kilogram and in certain farming systems uh, they are eating very close to or even above two kilos by the time of weaning right but in our scenario we should because our farmers are you know uh, cost conscious and it's not available and all that you know, we should aim for at least 750 grams for a smaller uh, uh, host in Frisian. sometimes we see these crosses uh, Frisian crosses right 25 kilos 22 kilos 28 kilos right so those animals you may not be able to reach one kilogram by the time of weaning right but generally this is your goal right one kilogram by the time of weaning right uh, so remember uh, crude protein should be at least 18 percent right but if they are you know uh, they have you know uh, fast growing calves they have high uh, body weight gains then you should consider a, a, a calf starter as much as 20 percent or even 22 percent certain farms are giving if the calf growth is high Right, so calf starter like we said is something you introduce on day four right and then it will gradually increase towards a kilo or more by the time of weaning right so straw is also something you introduce on day four together with this right um so so why straw and not hay or not fresh grass Think about that for a minute hmm. but, but, but do you think is different between hay pasture versus straw is straw more nutritious is straw more palatable do you think calves will prefer straw or fresh grass uh, um so preference palatability nutritive value all of these are higher in pasture or hay versus straw right yet we recommend to give straw huh? in singular we say no na kami wa ma begin one that you are the nam pidruwa ge kiyala so that is that a compliment no that is not a compliment right so that is a complaint uh, when we say it's tastes like straw means it doesn't taste good it has no nutritive value uh, i don't like it right so but yet we insist on feeding straw instead of pasture so why do you think that is right so that is because the goal of feeding straw is not to provide nutrients not to provide carbohydrate the goal is not to use straw as a source of amino acids or fatty lip, 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 uh, fatty acids right that is not the goal the goal of feeding straw is to provide substrate for microbial attachment is to provide substrate for rumen expansion is to provide substrate you know for to maintain the 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 rumen ph right to stimulate salivation right so salivation requires you know rough particles inside the rumen and when chewing right salivation stimulated 
right so this saliva comes and play a buffering action ph regulation right um, so those are the goals of uh, making animals calves eat straw right we are not giving straw as a source of nutrition here right so that needs to be understood right um, so that is why we are giving straw so why not give hay or pasture Th this would still take place right pasture can provide a substrate for microbial attachment pasture can provide substrate for rumen expansion bulking up the rumen right pasture can provide stimulation for salivary secretion uh, the other one i forgot to mention is you know they also uh, provide that abrasiveness to prevent clumping of uh, papillae right so these four reasons right um, so pasture can also do that but then why do we give straw right we give straw because if we give pasture because the animal likes it because it's a natural feed for the animals they will keep on eating it we will they will continue eating it until they are full and so what happens when they are full uh, they are not getting a lot of energy from the pasture right they are not getting a lot of carbohydrates uh, easily digestible carbohydrates which are essential for papillary development butyrate producing carbohydrates are little right in pasture so they will eat the pasture but they will not eat calf starter right stomach will get filled up soon with pasture so when they do that they won't have room for calf starter and therefore they won't develop their ru rum ruminal papilla the rest of the rumen development in a speedy fashion like we want in the commercial calf production okay so that is the those are the reasons why we recommend to give straw instead of pasture right so that needs to be understood you know i ask this um, almost every year uh, from undergraduate and postgraduate exams right a uh, small percentage a very small percentage gives me the complete answer right a lot of people get this wrong completely wrong and those who do give me an answer correct answer uh, i don't get the these four things that i mentioned right i don't get a complete answer and of course you need to give water ad libitum right um so not sure if i mentioned this right so uh, like i said earlier you know we we calculate the milk dose by birth weight not body weight right so if we if we calculate 10 percent that that used to be the traditional practice right people used to increase volume of milk quantity of milk fed as the body weight increased right uh, but we don't do that uh, we don't recommend that simply because because if the calf drinks milk and stomach gets full right it won't have an appetite for calf starter so we have clearly shown that it is not the milk but the calf starter that stimulates rumen development right so by giving milk we don't gain much so that's why we stick to uh, we, we stick do this calculation by birth weight right so uh, the animal at 40 kilograms and at 70 80 kilograms it still gets that four liters as a as a calculation from the birth weight right so remember that okay uh, and then you know we will talk about weaning in detail right so when we when it comes to weaning when it gets close to weaning time you know we typically recommend gradually uh, weaning of the milk but some farms still practice abrupt weaning right but abrupt weaning abrupt anything is not recommended in farming right uh, uh, whether pet animals or, or livestock poultry horses right changes in feeding housing all these need to be done gradually right and weaning is no exception stopping milk right changing housing uh, changing calf starter changing type of roughage all these need to be done 
gradually right so we'll be i'll go into details on that when we talk about weaning right um so we introduce immature foragers or hay right fresh or hay dried uh, after weaning right so that, that happens after weaning this phase are uh, not at weaning and of course you know water at libitum don't forget that regardless during all stages right so like i said before uh, if you practice everything on this slide properly you will have fantastic returns from the calf right provided you maintain all the health and housing aspects well right as far as feeding goes uh, this is all you need to know right if you practice this you can do wonders whether it's a small scale farm medium scale farm or even if you go to almarai uh, uh, largest farms in the world you know this is the fundamental of everything they do right because there are little other little things like you know they couldn't add you know different supplements uh, uh, medical uh, management and all that but other than that feeding wise you know, this is the this is this is it this is all you need to know at this level right okay right let's move on to the next slide right so this shows a comparison of an intensified feeding management uh con experiment and control feeding control is you know the traditional feed conventional feeding right so they have done two trials so, so on the first trial uh three or five day milk right is you know higher with intensified feeding so remember this intensified feeding is pre-weaning calf management right so when they when they compare the uh, lactation records first lactation right of calves that were given an intensified feeding management they produced more milk than the control group or conventional group right trial two not so much right but still they produce more um, i don't want to spend too much time on this right because some of you may not have done statistics yet right in undergraduate class especially um so 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 here it says you know diet is significant a trial b trial is significant so that means there has been a difference between the trials as well trial one and two were different uh, for some other reasons right but diet is also different right so meaning diet is responsible for this difference right diet has an association with this different the difference being uh, intensified calf feeding management which i talked about here versus conventional calf feeding um, so protein milk protein is not different by diet see diet would have been a but here it says only b right uh, so protein content trial is different uh, for some reason the two trials were different but not different by diet and for fat also not different right so this, this is important right so when you look at the numbers numbers say okay 858 is higher than 811 so you might think oh wow so intensified calf feeding increases milk fat during the first lactation no but that is not correct that is only a numerical observation right so if we can make judgments by numerical observations statistics wouldn't exist right so we do statistical analysis to uh, find out if there is an actual association of the treatment group versus the control group and so the, the basically the take home message i want you to, to take from here is that um, intensified calf feeding increases total volume of milk right but not milk fat or milk protein right which means it has no effect on changing the composition of milk right it can improve the quantity of milk but it doesn't change the composition of milk i mean that's understood right um, so milk is milk right you can't change the composition of milk 
right just un unless you you know change the ratios of the feed during lactation right but larger volume of milk means you know higher development higher development of the animal as a whole the other uh, and so on right okay right um, so this shows the lactation impact on the lactation length right so this group uh, a lactation length is a which means diet right diet and trial were different so diet definitely was had an influence on the lactation length right so this way it's longer longer right trial was also different but trial could be different due to many reasons i mean if you i don't remember the paper if i remember read the paper maybe you know it will talk about uh, tri the tri two trials being done in two different farms right then obviously um, you know you are going to get different data right but within the trial you know diet had an influence on changing uh, lactation length right so remember what we saw on the first one is three or five day milk right um so i'll, I'll talk about that in the future right so different animals will lactate different lengths uh, depending on management depending on when they get pregnant uh, depending on the nutrition level and so on but for us to be able to compare uh, different animals that lactate at different lengths of time we talk about something called the three or five two x twice a day milk equivalent right um, so three or five is also made by you know in a uh, under perfect conditions an animal uh, you know th 365 day calendar year animal should produce 305 days of milk plus 60 days of dry period right so that is also how this comes but in reality uh, you you don't have such a thing in reality uh, cows don't get dried off exactly on three or five days right it depends on other factors the majority of cows don't right? there might be a few ones right but generally there is only a uh, theoretical calculation you do in reality cows will uh, lactate for 280 days 390 days 350 days 320 days uh, some animals that get um, uh, 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 let's say uh, mastitis and dried off you know may, may, may lactate only 200 days right or 150 days but still you can do a calculation and estimate the 305 2x me right which we'll go into details all right so not only the 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 305 day milk but even the actual milk produced see 305 milk is 23000 and 20000 actual milk is 28000 and 24000 because they lactated a longer period right so during 305 days so this was the actual milk they gave right during a lactation length but when you correct it for 305 days this is what they get 23000 and 20000 versus 28000 and 24000 right so we'll, we'll talk about that more when we go into 305 2x me right uh, and then so all the milk uh, composition was unaffected see fat and protein was not affected by the diet right fat corrected milk was positively affected by the diet right um, so what is fat corrected milk right so that is um you know okay so so here uh so let's say they produced twenty four thousand liters of milk right and let's say three percent was fat let's say fat let's say fat concentration was consistent right so 24 uh, three percent of twenty four thousand fat should be higher than that but i'm just saying you know three percent uh, for the sake of calculation right so three percent of twenty four thousand was fat uh, which will be about uh, what let's assume it is twenty five thousand right one percent would be 
250 so 750 kilograms of fat right for 3 percent fat 25,000 kilograms if it's kilograms these are these are pounds yeah? right um, and here 20 let's say for ease of calculation 30,000 right 30,000 3 percent of 30,000 is 900 right so our total fat right our total fat was higher here so although the milk composition three percent didn't change three percent fat was the same for control and intensified group but if you take the total fat right 750 kilograms here 900 kilograms here right so you know one of the major criteria of uh, value valuation of milk right pricing of farm gate milk is based on fat percentage right so we calculate something called fat corrected milk right so when the fat corrected milk was calculated right obviously this gives more milk right because of that calculation i told you about it's not exactly the total fat right but i don't want to go into details about fat corrected milk but you know so that's what you get right so total fat is high here which means the the dollars or rupees you get is much higher for intensified feeding right so this is you know other than the the immediate uh, benefits of intensified calf feeding which are um, you know better rumen development rumen papillary development early weaning better calf growth you know other than that so these are the long term benefits of intensified pre weaning calf management uh, right uh, you get more milk you get more value for your milk and you get cows lactating longer period right i hope that is very clear and i hope you know after seeing these lectures you will practice uh, intensified calf management in your respective ranges right regardless of whether it's a small animal a small scale medium scale or large scale you know try to adopt this intensive calf feeding management um, in in your range okay right so we talked about you know be milk being constant right because from birth weight uh, and then we talked about you know having giving sufficient consent ad libitum making sure there's ad libitum concentrates for calves to feed on right so that um, you know they have whatever amount they want right but then you know how do you know my calf is eating enough concentrates right do you just put ad libitum and whatever the calf eats eats and you're content you're okay i i don't know if the calf is sufficient recommended amounts for the age right but hey i mean i give i, I do my job i give ad libitum and it, it it eats so i assume uh it's getting enough is that is that good enough right um so so ideally you have to be able to calculate the the concentrate and milk right based on the calves body weight and growth rate right so it is obvious that uh, a two week old 30 kilogram calf will eat less than a four week old 40 kilogram calf right but what if what if one calf is growing faster and the other one is growing slower right so do they eat the same quantity or not no, they probably won't right so they will eat uh, uh, this group growing at 600 grams per day will eat more than this group eating 400 grams per day right so how do we calculate that right okay so to do that you need to know these figures calf energy requirements right um, so there's a chart right I got from this source right so calfnotes.com is highly recommended guys uh, regardless of what you which area of management calf management you are looking at 
you know they, they have very reliable up-to-date information right so i got this from them actually they, they, their table was on uh, using um, calories right mega calories but i converted into mega joules because that's what we use in sri lanka generally right so this column shows different body weights of calves this column shows different growth rates right so 30 kilogram calf growing at 200 grams per day 30 kilogram calves gaining 400 grams per day and so on right and when it comes to 40 kilograms and above, some of them can be gaining as much as 600 or even more, right? Um, so these are the, the numbers for maintenance, metabolizable energy for maintenance, metabolizable energy for growth or gain. And so there are formulas to calculate that. Uh, metabolizable energy for maintenance, megajoules equals 0.75 power of body weight times 0.1 or divided by 10 and times 4.184 to calculate uh, to convert mega calories to mega joules right so if you if you do this calculation only you will get your answer in mega calories but if you want to convert convert it into mega joules you have to multiply by 4.184 right so basically uh, one mega calorie or one calorie is 4.184 joules right and me growth or weight gain is calculated using this formula right 0.84 times body weight to the power of 0.355 times average daily gain in kilograms are huh? not in grams so these in grams in kilograms to the power of 1.2 times 4.1.84 4.184 to convert to megajoules right so if you know the body weight and the average daily gain you can calculate this and this these two columns for any calf any age any uh, body weight right any body weight gain right so these are just some set values but depending on the 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 farm depending on the age depending on the weight depending on the gain using these two formulas you will have to calculate at your farm to get these values right um so uh, you may not have done any of these energy requirements at this stage you know I'm, I'm not uh, a nutritionist right i have a very basic knowledge in uh, these nutrition calculations and all that right um, so but from my my basic knowledge is more than enough uh, you know in the context of sri lankan small and medium and even large scale uh, farming right um, so but so but you you need to get that as well right so uh, so we, we talk about four different levels of energy gross energy uh, digestible energy metabolizable energy and net energy right so i, I want you to read up on this look up on the internet so gross energy is the total energy in any given feed right so if you uh, uh, do laboratory testing let's say i'm, I'm just giving you know very th hypothetical values are huh? they are incorrect inaccurate but just for you know just figures right let's say you, you take one kilogram of uh, one kilogram dry matter of prima concentrate feed uh, cattle feed and you subject it to bomb calorimeter you know laboratory testing and you look at the energy uh, gross energy might be 20 uh, megajoules per kilogram of dry matter right but when it gets digested in the gut not all 20 is absorbed right maybe only 16 gets absorbed right so four megajoules get lost in the feces right so now gross energy was 20 but four lost in the feces right didn't get digested or whatever right and then 16 would be the digestible energy of this one kilogram of 
cattle feed, right? And then, uh, so 16 is absorbed into the system, right? However, not all 16 are used for metabolism, right? Um, part of it is lost in urine, right? And then, um, so we say, let's say another two gets lost in urine. So uh, 20 was the gross energy, 16 was the digestible energy, four gets lost in feces, and another two gets lost in the urine. So even though 16 gets absorbed, only 14 is now metabolizable energy, right? And then even the, the 14, right, out of that, uh, it will be used for, uh, you know, uh, metabolic activity of the body, for breathing, gaseous loss. Uh, uh, so there are, so I'm, I'm, I'm only talking about the major points, right? And then, uh, so you add all these other losses and then you have a net energy, right? And then, so these are the four levels, right? So lost by feces, gross uh, energy minus what's lost in feces is digestible energy and digestible energy gets absorbed right which is 16 in this example and 2 gets lost in the urine so metabolizable energy becomes 14 and then you know it's used for various activities and you have net energy right so these are the four um, uh, four levels of energy or whatever right so you need to read up on that and um, right so I'm, I'm just giving you basic knowledge necessary for uh, this lecture right so but when we, we usually talk about we refer to metabolizable energy for maintenance metabolizable energy for growth right so if we look at adult animals they don't have a com component for growth or gaining right uh, so they'll have metabolizable energy for maintenance and they'll have metabolizable energy for things like lactation right because milk, for milk production also there will be energy right so the total metabolizable energy uh, per day for these animals would be the addition of these two 5.4 plus 1.7 right so this is the metabolizable energy requirement for calves of different weights gaining different uh, body weight daily body weight gain right um, so you need to ensure that the calf gets this daily requirement right but it gets more complicated with calves than with adult animals right because this depends on the level of rumen uh, digestive tract development right so initially immature right so let's say you have the same calf starter at two weeks uh the let's say calf starter has 20 megajoules of gross energy right at two weeks a smaller proportion maybe 50 60 percent of that gross energy will get uh no not 50 60 something less huh? so I'm, I'm just giving numbers right let's say out of the 20 mega joules of gross energy only eight gets absorbed right so metabolizable energy is 40 percent now because only uh, eight got absorbed from the 20 but at six weeks now the rumen is relatively development the digestion process is more efficient now 12 mega joules get absorbed in contrast to the eight that got absorbed four weeks ago right um, so now suddenly metabolizable energy is 60 percent right so similarly uh, because the rumen and digestive tract development is not complete in calves you can't give a fixed figure for calf starter saying okay this is the metabolizable energy for calf starter right you can't do that because calf rumen is not developed yet is developing right so that that makes this complicated that's that makes this complicated right um to do this calculation because you don't know at this which age uh, you know different levels of absorption uh, metabolizable energy at different stages of development right so but if you have a rough idea right um so uh, uh, so i i'll show you uh, another graph right so generally we say um, um generally we say with a 
developed well developed rumen right with a well developed uh, rumen which would be latter stage of pre calf management uh, towards weaning about 12 to 14 right so we are very close to weaning right very close to weaning uh, with proper rumen development uh, it can be somewhere around 12 to 14 megajoules per kilo dry, kilo, kilogram of dry matter calf starter right um, so basically if you have this 12 to 14 right you can achieve this with one kilogram see with one kilogram and then of course you are going to get from milk right uh, so we usually say milk um, um, so let's say these are 45 kilograms and let's say this is a uh, was a born at 30 kilograms right let's say this animal was born at 30 kilograms right so it drinks three liters of milk a day right uh, so we usually say the uh, metabolizable energy of milk is about uh, 2.5 2.78 right usually we say 2.8 right uh, but for this calculation let's say three right so three liters of milk give um, about nine huh? maybe eight eight point five megajoules of energy right because the animal is getting three liters of milk a day right so eight point six let's say so six megajoules you have to provide with uh, concentrate or calf start right so milk gets him 8.6 megajoules of energy the other six liters i'm sorry six megajoules you have to get from concentrate right and so if the animal is you know maybe three weeks uh animal is probably not getting this 12 megajoules uh, uh, from concentrate maybe it's getting 10 megajoules right so the, this is when it gets complicated right and then to get 10 megajoules right maybe calf needs to eat you know 400 500 grams right or, 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 right so that, that's how this calculation needs to be done so we will do some calculations uh, and then this will become clearer to you right so right now so this let's say 30 kilogram animal as soon as it's born right so let's say it's gaining weight at 200 grams per day the requirement is 7.1 right but by giving three liters we are ensuring that it gets this because each liter has 2.5 megajoules for example 2.5 times three liters is 7.5 right so that's that's enough right but when it if it's growing at 400 grams right per day now higher body weight uh, gain now that 7.5 is not enough now you have to give calf starter right so if it's gaining even more you have to give even more calf starter now you see the difference between let's say a poorly managed farm without calf starter uh, they have smaller calves because they don't get that extra energy to grow faster whereas a, a better managed farm where they are given calf starter they get that extra energy to gain better body weight right so so let's say these are uh, so uh, with three liters let's say you can get um, uh, eight megajoules right and so this animal 40 kilogram animal only gaining 200 grams because the animal gets only 0.5 from calf starter right let's say 100 grams right and this animal is gaining 600 grams per day because it gets 8.5 from the milk and another additional 5 from calf starter right so very simple if you can give that 13.7 they will grow at 600 grams per day. if you can't give that you know, they will grow at a slower pace so we call them runs or stunted animals or whatever uh, nothing wrong with the animal it's all to do with whether you can supply this or not 
supply if you milk uh, meant to supply only the maintenance this you have to supplement with car starter okay right okay so this is for up to 45 kilogram cars right but so this chart next chart shows some uh, uh, additional ones right for so this from a different source right um, for uh, 80 kilogram 140 kilogram and 200 kilogram animals right i don't want to go into details of all of them you can do that right but what i want to show here is um, see when they go from 80 to 140 to 200 right the the me requirement goes down right see um, protein requirement crude protein requirement goes down right so look at this chart right and um, uh, see if you can understand i'm sure you can understand if you have any question feel free to shoot them okay so this is where we will uh, maybe we'll do one more slide right um so do these calculations right based on what we talked about right and we'll we'll discuss them in class right uh, so uh, assume these are 30 kilogram calf right the uh, 30 kilograms at birth right so 30 kilograms at birth which means you are giving three liters of milk right do the calculation assuming uh, taking that assumption okay right so remember uh, so i only talked about energy requirements so just like energy uh, calf has requirements for crude protein fiber minerals right vitamins also right so you'll ideally need to know all of those uh, this talks about in pounds and mega calories so you need to convert them into kilograms and mega joules uh, so to be able to apply them to the sri lankan situation uh, right so this is very important right um so during uh during entire calf uh, pre-weaning period right pre-weaning period what is the total amount of calf starter eaten right because a lot of people think uh, and this is going to cost me tens of thousands of rupees right i'm not going to give calf starter but if you do the calculation right uh, they won't eat a lot of calf starter throughout this period right so uh, also try try to calculate this manually uh, uh, so for example during the first week no calf starter during second week uh, they are eating about let's say you know 50 grams per day uh, during third week they are eating 100 grams per day during fourth week maybe this 150 so on so calculate this so this must be the time point of weaning here right eight week week two three four five six seven eight nine right so they are weaning uh on the eighth week now after the ninth ninth week here right so add them up and see what they eat right and also refer to this right is very important i refer to this uh, they talk about something called nfc which stands for non-fiber carbohydrate right so typically carb starter has about 50 percent non-fiber carbohydrate so they talk about a magic number uh, which is your goal right so you need to make sure that a calf is n number of kilos of non-fiber carbohydrates right so if they've shown that if you can ensure that a calf is this quantity of nfc uh, the calf will have a mature rumor so read about that so if n number of kilos of nfc is would be would be 2n kilos of uh, raw calf starter right because uh, nfc is 50 percent of dry matter basis from calf starter right so read this 
and give me the answer to this have the answer ready by next week uh, so have the answer ready by uh, the lecture uh, discussion right so it's it's also important guys for you to remember that we talk about all these numbers right however um they are not set in stone right um so there will be animals that go along our line there will be animals that consume more than what we talk about and there will be animals whatever you try they will not consume you know our quantities recommended quantities right so they are there whatever you do they will just not eat and this is where selection and culling comes into play right um, so those who don't perform however much you try should not be selected for you know further growth and breeding right they will be poor producers they will bring down your averages they will be a burden to you they will get sick uh, they will not give you enough milk they will not come into uh, heat on time they are the troublemakers right so this is where culling needs to be practiced so if you don't cull these animals uh, they will contribute uh, to the next generation uh, genetics to the next generation and then you know they will also be poor producers like this so constant pain in the neck right so make sure you select only this group of animals uh, not this group right so your 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 culling criterion might be the bottom one third might be the bottom half right but at least the bottom 25 percent or one third you have to cull right okay guys that is where we will stop today we will uh, uh, so make sure you answer the questions before you come to the discussion right thank you very much